about my birth and what happened. It's a long story, so if you want to listen, get a drink and some snacks. It is a long story. On the 6th of December, I've got to get my dates right. They're probably wrong, but it was a bit of a blur. 6th or 6th of December, at half one in the morning, I woke up in the middle of the night and what I thought I had just done a little wee, I was a bit like, okay, this is a bit weird. It's not, do you know when you, when your waters break, it's like, a, well, what I thought was like a massive gush of water like we see on the movies. So I was like, I don't think my waters have broke, but I think I've just weed myself. So, went to the toilet, sorted myself out, then went back to bed. And throughout the night it kept waking me up, just little trickles of like water coming out. And I was like, I don't know what this is. So I thought, well, I'm gonna ring in the morning, I'm gonna ring the hospital and just tell them. And I searched it as well in the night and it did say that your waters can break slowly. This is a whole week before I was actually due. It was meant to be, he was due on the 14th. So I then rang them, Hinchinbrook. So we went to Hinchinbrook. That's another story why we're not going to Peterborough, but we went to, we rang Hinchinbrook and they said to come in and we'll like test the liquid to like see if it is your waters that have broken. So I went in, they were adamant that my waters hadn't broken. They were like, no, we don't think you have, but we'll do the test anyway. So I was like, yeah, okay, I just, this isn't like, do you know when you just know your body and you know that that's not normal? So they did the test. Funny enough, they were like, oh, we take back what we said. Your waters have broken. I was like, thank you. I, to I could have told you that myself, but anyway. So she said to me, your waters can only be broken a certain amount of hours. She did tell me the hours, but I can't remember that now. So she said, we have to go back at nine o'clock. She said, you can either stay in the hospital and wait for your contractions to start, or you can go home. We chose to go home because we haven't got a hospital bag or anything sorted. So we came back here and I kind of had a bath and got ready for what was just about to happen. Um, no contractions at all, nothing. It was getting to like six o'clock at night, seven o'clock at night, nothing. Um, had some food. Um, I didn't, I wasn't really that hungry because I was like really nervous as to like, this is the start and it's gonna, something's gonna happen and we're gonna have a baby and like, it was all, but I wasn't that hungry. Um, and then like subconsciously in my head, I was like, oh, am I getting a contraction? Like. Or like, am I getting pains or am I just making them up in my head? Like, they weren't contractions. They were just all in my head. Then we went to the hospital for nine o'clock and I said to them, yeah, there's still no contractions. And they said, okay, because your waters have been broken for this long, we have to induce you um, and give you a hormone drip to bring on the contractions for you. And they said, just to let you know, they do come on really quick and really fast because it's, not natural it's forced so it's just like happened straight away you don't have a build up to it so i was like okay and they were right within like five minutes they were thick and strong those contractions and uh, why stupid old me did not dare to say that i was having a contraction she was just chatting to me and i was like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she was like are you having a contraction i was like i think so she was like why didn't you say do you want anything and i was like what can i have and she was like, you can have gas and air if you want. I was like, yeah, if that's all right. But why did I feel like awkward to like ask like for gas and air or like help or whatever? That's just me. The contractions were coming. This now I would say was like 12 o'clock at night. And um, because the contractions were forced and with a hormone drip, Ralph wasn't dealing with it very well because it wasn't like done naturally. It was very just like straight away. He, he couldn't cope with it. So the, what they kept having to do is turn it off. But once when they turned it off, then I wasn't getting contractions to push him out. So it was all a bit like you were just in a stuck circle really on what to do because they needed the hormone drip to be working. So then my contractions would come on so I could dilate more. So then it, he then would be able, I would be able to push him out. But because we kept turning it, having to turn it off so his heart rate wasn't so high, um, it was just taking so long. Like hours and hours would go by and I was in so much pain. I said, is there anything else I can have? And they said, oh, you can have pethidine. Um, that was some great stuff. I had that, that kept me going for a good couple of hours then. Um, then it starts getting into the morning. Um, I was still on the gas and air as well as the pethidine. 
um and a bit this bit was kind of just like quite boring because it was just like gas in it i can't really remember this i think i was so high on gas and air like i was taking that shit like like proper <laughs> um, and like lewis was filming me i've got some videos and they're so funny i can't remember them he said i was like slagging him off to the nurses and everything but i can't remember um and then so fast forward when it gets to like night time ish they were basically saying that they thought i had sepsis and because i had a really high temperature um and my heart rate was really high and because my heart rate was really high and where the do you know the little like blue and pink bands that they put around your belly that is to monitor your and baby's heartbeat and they were getting mine and ralph's mixed up all the time because baby's heart rates are um significantly significant i can't say that word but high um so they were getting confused with whose heart rate was whose and they were saying that mine's really high and then all of a sudden um he started to really drop um and I, then they started to say to me right your 10 meter your 10 whatever centimeters dilated you can start pushing so i was pushing and pushing and pushing pushing for two hours um, and his head was turned like this so they wanted his head to be like this so he could come out but he was not budging and I, when I tell you I had so many people men whatever with hands up everywhere like your dignity just goes out the window and I was kind of thinking oh I don't want everyone to like see you down there but I was like legs up all of these people just coming in and then like people were like feeling where he was and being like oh he's got a lot of hair and i was like this is so weird completely left out that i had an epidural at, um towards the end because the pain was just unbearable so i was like i need an epidural then i couldn't feel anything so then when i was pushing you have to push on a contraction i couldn't feel the contractions because the epidural so that was quite hard to they were like when you just feel tightening and i was like well, i can't feel anything so so I was pushing for so long and then they started to get really worried about Ralph and me because they thought that my that I had got sepsis and they were worried like something was going to happen or whatever I don't know I don't really understand what sepsis is but they were like he needs to come out very soon or we're going to have to take you to theatre and try forceps to try and turn his head so you can get him out so then I started to really panic, started to like get all like really hot and stuff like that. And then they started to panic more that something was wrong with me because I had high temperature. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm just so nervous about going into theatre. I've never had an operation before, all of this. And all of this talk that I can hear is sending me, giving me a fucking panic attack. So still pushing and they were like, if it doesn't come out on this go, we, we've got to go. And the next thing you know, someone just pulls this like red cord and then like just like felt like hundreds of people just run into the room. There's about 10 people just like come straight in and then there's alarms going and people are like passing Lewis like these scrubs and they were like unclipping everything and just getting me as quickly as they could into theatre and I was just like strolling through. Do you know like in the movies where you're like laying in the bed and you just see the lights like going in slow mo. I felt like that was me. I felt like I was being wheeled to my death. Um, and I just remember thinking like, well, I was a bit high as well, but I was thinking, fuck, what is going on? Like, surely this isn't normal. Like the way people have births, they're like, oh, I'll do it again. And at that time I was thinking, I will never do this again. Horrific. And probably still now, I still won't ever want to do it again. But to so get into the theatre room and then they give me a spinal block where like that you are completely paralyzed from like here downwards and it was so weird i was just like laid on the bed talking to lewis like that and the next thing you know my legs were like up in the air and i had no idea because i can't feel it it was so it was like they were moving someone else's legs it was so bizarre and then i was chatting to lewis and like lewis was like don't look and i was like okay and he said after he said these massive metal pliers are like coming to, they were the forceps to like try and turn ralph's head um to like pull him out and all i could just you can just feel like a lot of tugging but i just think what the hell were you doing down there <laughs> like how did i not like tear or anything down there and how was like it all okay afterwards because it felt like they were doing a lot down there um so then they were really trying to pull his 
head to the side and then the clamp wouldn't go on to one side they managed to get his head it was all of it and they were like we can't get him out and he's like really really struggling we need to get him out now so then they were like c-section and then everyone started like getting all these like knives and tools and all of that and i was just like panicking thinking this is not what i wanted it's not what i wanted but then i kind of got myself in a mindset like as long as ralph comes out okay and fine then just do whatever you need to do and then i remember just sat talking to lewis and saying to lewis like, are you okay because he's like really doesn't like like theaters blood anything like that and he was obviously think feeling for me as well like scared for me and like what was happening obviously you don't realize what they go through as well like seeing their partner and stuff like that in the situation and just feeling a bit helpless so i kept saying to him are you okay are you okay and he was like yeah are you okay and i'm like yeah i'm fine like i couldn't feel a thing so like at that point i was just like quite chill like it was just like all these people rushing around about me um all me and lewis were bothered about is you are going to put a screen up aren't you we're not going to see anything you are going to put a screen up they were like yeah yeah we will then they put the blue screen up and within six minutes from them starting ralph was out like it was that quickly and he didn't feel a thing didn't feel anything and the feeling of just like hearing him cry and being like my baby's here it's so weird and like lewis the lady came over to lewis like do you want to come see him and he was like uh, uh, i do but I, I don't want to see it down there i don't want to see her or whatever he was thinking doesn't want to see me like full on cut open on the bed <laughs> she was like just fine just come around and don't look and lewis was like okay and he goes around and like takes a little picture of him on the little scales and then he brings him over and then i had a little cuddle and it was literally the best thing ever um and then you just kind of forget everything that's just happened in the last two days that like, just all goes out of your mind and you're just like with this baby and then you just get wheeled into this room you the dad and this baby and you've just got to deal with it it's pretty scary um but he was jaundiced when he was born so he had to stay in hospital for five days which was hard really shit when you just wanted to go home lewis also had a really bad cold and flu he had the flu so he was really ill and just wanted to be at home I was like bed bound, could not move out of my bed, I couldn't even sit up, could do anything. So like anything Ralph needed, Lewis had to do, but he was so poorly that we didn't want him around Ralph. So it was like really hard, the midwives basically had to do everything for us. Uh, they were really good to be fair, but we just wanted to be at home in our own space. Once Ralph's jaundice levels came down, we were able to go home. Um, they discharged us at 11 o'clock at night, came home. I realised when I got home, I didn't even know how to make a bottle. I didn't know anything. Like, it was like 12 o'clock at night. I'd never made a formula bottle before. And at that point, I didn't even... If Lewis was, like, not ill, like, he was so... I've never seen him that ill. He just went straight to bed. Like, and if he was normal, he would have spoke to me and been like, look, where's the milk powder? He would have read on the back that you put two... With so many scoops in, this is... But at that point, I was thinking, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know how to make a bottle. Ralph wouldn't drink from the ready-made ones. Like, we struggled a lot in hospital because he just wouldn't take his milk at all. And then when we came home, it was still exactly the same. would not take his milk. But John just makes him really tired, so he just wanted to sleep. Didn't want to feed. Um, but my anxiety was so high because all I knew that I needed to feed him. But he wouldn't he wouldn't feed but i can't do anything about it so what we had to do is just every time we had to feed him i'm just going to turn his wine every time we went to feed him we had to wake him up by changing his nappy and getting him naked and this process had to happen every two hours and it just took so long it was so stressful and so just draining so got home couldn't make a bottle and was just like could hardly walk he was really crying I didn't even know how to put him in his bed. I didn't know how to wrap him up, what was safe, what was not, if he was cold, if he was hot. I didn't know anything. Um, and Lewis was like, tell me what you need me to do. And I, I was like, you can't do it. I don't, we don't want you around Ralph. Like, he's literally like five days old. You've got this horrible flu. So I just rang my mum crying and was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Can you just come? And she was like, yeah, she lives like 45 minutes away. And she was like, yep, yeah, I'll be there. She came, it was like two o'clock in the morning. 
she said because in hospital as well I hadn't slept or eaten for the whole five days not a single thing Lewis kept trying to make me eat and I just did not want to eat I was just like my anxiety was through the roof um, I didn't sleep at all because within those two hours I was in pain I was uncomfortable when your baby's not crying it's other people's babies crying um, and then within that two hours you don't I can't fall asleep like that so it takes me about 45 minutes to get to sleep and then before you know it he wants he's up again and needs another bottle so for five days I didn't sleep I was starting to hallucinate I was starting to see things because I haven't ate I hadn't drank I hadn't anything um, I was so weak uh, it was awful that first those days in hospital when I think about now I just think how did we get through that um, and then so my mum came around and she was like, right, you go and sleep. Go in the other room, I'll look after him in here. It's fine, you go and sleep. So I was like, okay. So I went in the other room, slept as much as I could, but I was just so on edge. I felt so bad that my mum would come and she was looking after Ralph and I feel like I should have been doing that. So I did sleep for like two hours. Um, and then I think we had an appointment or so. I honestly can't think of what happened the day after, but Lewis was still really poorly and mum said, do you want to come live with me for a couple of days while Lewis gets better? So I went and lived with my mum for a couple of days and that really helped. She just sat up with me in the night and I was getting really bad panic attacks. Um, I was getting, just, I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't drink, I wouldn't sleep. I just, don't know why. My emotions were so high, I'd cry at anything. I think it didn't help that I was away from Lewis because in that kind of time when you're feeling like that, you just really want like your boyfriend um and he wasn't there he was poorly and i was trying to look after this baby who also wouldn't feed he just didn't want his milk the um health visitors came around and they got his weight wrong on the red book that you get basically it's just a little red book of all of their things and they had written his birth weight wrong down what why can i get that word out He'd written his birth weight down wrong. And so when the health visitors came, they weighed him and they were like, he's dropped quite a lot. And I was like, he has been not feeding very well, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, yeah, he's dropped quite a lot. You need to really try and get this milk down him. I'm like, I'm trying everything I can and he just will not take the bottles. Like, he just will not take them. Um, so I was really struggling with that had what we had thought lost loads of weight when actually he hadn't they had written it down wrong so when they came and measured him uh, weighed him and it looked like he'd lost loads he'd only lost a tiny bit and if i'd known that when they came round my anxiety my anxiety wouldn't have been as bad because it was all around his feeding my anxiety would come from like Every time it was feed time, I just feel like this scared, sickness feeling, this hot, sweaty feeling, because I knew he just literally wouldn't take it. Um, so when we finally figured out that they had written it down wrong, I felt a lot better. And like a midwife came round, she was like, "You're doing great. He's fine. His weight's fine." He's feeding, you do need to be giving him this much, but if he, if he doesn't have it, it's not the end of the world. And I was like, okay, thank God someone's saying that, because why did I think that you had to take 60 mil as soon as he was born? Because that just wasn't the case for Ralph. Like, he worked up towards that, but he couldn't just take it in one. It was, it was obviously like a day old, just been born. He's not used to a bottle, he doesn't know how to take it. But now I can think that, but at the time, I just thought, why is he not feeding? But anyway, a couple of days go by, well, a week or two goes by, and then me and Lewis had noticed that he'd got a bit of a snotty nose, and like, he was coughing quite a bit. And, uh, no, me and my mum noticed it. And Lewis is stepped down as a plastic surgeon, like doctor thing. So I rang him and I said, look, he sounds, his breathing sounds really weird. Um, and, like, I can just sense something's wrong. And he was like, okay, and then I started crying, and he was like, do you want to come live at ours? And I was like, yeah, my mum was shattered, I'd been there for like four days, mum hadn't slept either. So then I went and slept at Lewis's mum and stepdad's house, where I felt a lot better because he's like a trained doctor, he knows what he's doing. 
so I went there they helped massively they were like we'll look after him for the night you go and take you go and have a shower you go and go to sleep and I had one full night's sleep and that was the first full night's sleep I had in two weeks and I woke up they he made me breakfast and I'd eaten for the first time properly um, I started to feel a bit better I was still having these waves of anxiousness come over me but they were very good at seeing like he's had this much that's fine that's all he wants and I'm like okay then like we, we Joe did notice his stepdad that his breathing was a bit funny um, and but he said he is he is okay um, just keep an eye on it so Lewis then started to feel better and we came back home and then a health visitor came round and they said Oh, this was like a week later health visitor came around I said he'll, he has had a cough and this sniffly nose for a while but like the cough's getting quite bad now and like he's quite snotty and stuff like that and she said that will be affecting his feeding because he can't breathe through his nose when he's feeding so he can't breathe when he feeds I was like oh okay then she said do you mind if I just look at his chest and I was like yeah looked at his chest and he was sucking in at the chest which I didn't know at that point that sucking in at the chest means they're struggling to breathe um, and when she said that to me obviously I was like what? she was like I don't want to alarm you but I think you'll be quicker going straight to hospital rather than calling an ambulance and I was like what the hell I just thought he had a cold and she was like I think he's got this thing called RSV which is bronchiolitis and I was like right okay she was like, you need to get him to the hospital now. And I was like, what the fuck? I just thought he had a cold. And then I felt awful thinking, why didn't I do something sooner? So took him straight to hospital. We got straight through into the children's ward. And uh, they did loads of tests on him. He had to be on an oxygen machine because his oxygen levels were really low. But his heart rate was like at 200. Um, so he was really working hard to breathe. And his heart was like working hard and they put him on all of these like wires and machines and he had a cannula and all of this and it was horrible to watch like he was only a couple of weeks old and already in hospital really really poorly we stayed there for five days and he did have this thing called RSV um, and there was loads of other children in that same bit with RSV too and we came home it was Christmas we got out the day before Christmas Eve had Christmas, had like a really quiet Christmas, just went and saw a little bit of family and that was it because we wanted to keep Ralph away from as many people as we could because we did not want him getting ill again. Um, then a week goes by, start to notice him sniffing a little bit and I was like, and this cough comes, I was like, if he's got it again, honestly. Then in the middle of the night one night, he had a really high temperature, I got him out of his bed and he was scalding hot. And I woke Lewis up straight away, I was like, something's not right. He's he's really got a high temperature, he's really snotty, like, I don't know what to do. We rang Joe and he was like, I need to get him to hospital now. So I was like, oh my God. Straight away, went straight to hospital, said, he's got a really high temperature, he's obviously only three weeks old or whatever. They took us straight in, they did tests, they were doing meningitis tests, they were doing every test you could think of. The meningitis one was horrible because they had to basically get him naked, bend his back so he was like in a little curve and takes fluid out of his spine. Um, and they also needed to put a tube down his little willy to like get some, um, so all of this was just awful to see him go through. Um, it all turned out in the end once they did all of the tests that he had the flu. He'd caught the flu. So he most probably got that from Lewis. But he had bronchitis first, then got the flu. So yeah. We got antibiotics and he was fine. But, and then from then onwards, everything started to look upwards. <laughs> and he is now nearly five months and a healthy happy baby but has it been a fucking journey to get here like i don't even know how long i've been recording for but that is even the shortened version there is bits in between there was bits that things that happened in the hospital and all of this but like it would be too long but basically that's what happened from birth all the way up until three or four weeks after he was born was hell I finally know what I'm doing 
He's feeding, he's a chunk, he loves his milk, which gives me so much less anxiety about everything because I definitely had postnatal anxiety so, so bad. Um, and, but yeah, now everything's fine. But that is my birth story. And hopefully I was thinking the way I felt and the anxiety and the mo emotion and stuff like that, like I wanted to speak about it to make sure that everyone, that if people went through that, that it's fine because I thought I was the only one really struggling and I was the only one that couldn't handle it. And then when I put it on my Instagram, just the once I had so many people reply back to me saying this is exactly how I felt. I cried every day for two weeks and I was like, oh, this is normal. What I'm feeling is normal. And I kept saying to my mum, I didn't, I didn't realise that this is how people felt. Like I just thought I wasn't coping. Um, so hopefully someone will watch this video and feel the same. Um, but, but yeah, it was a bloody shambles at the beginning, but it's fine now.